this video, we talked about solving equations that contain fractions. So solving equations that have fractions in them is exactly the same as solving any equations that do not have fractions. The fractions can make the problems more com more tedious to solve, but fractions the fractions can be cleared by multiplying both sides of the equation by a common denominator. So it's best to use the lowest common denominator to have smaller numbers to work with. There's, there's any common denominator will work. You don't have to always use the small one. So let's do a couple of examples of this. Let's say I want to solve x over 3 plus 2 over 5 equals 6. Again, I notice I have fractions. I could find some way to simplify this by doing some other way, but the easiest way to do it is to find out what the common denominator is and multiply it by. So one common denominator I can notice is that both 3 and 5 multiply together to give me 15. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my equation, and I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by 15. And I can do this because I can do the same thing to both sides of the equation, and I haven't changed the equation in this fashion. Once I've done that, I do want to distribute that 15 through to these two on the left-hand side of the equation. So they give me 15 over 1 times x over 3. And I will make sure you see that 15 over 1. And then 15 over 1 times 2 over 5. And then you're going to have 15 times 6 on the other side. You're going to register you and have You've got a fraction of 15 over 1 times x over 3. You can simplify this. Um, notice that 3 does divide into 15 5 times. You get 5x here. Plus 15 over 1 times 2 over 5. Again, the 5 goes into 15 3 times. And you have 3 times 2 is equal to 15 times 6, which is 90. That gives me now 5x plus 6 equals 90. Notice you have no fractions left in the equation, and you can now just solve this by first subtracting 6 from both sides. And 5x is equal to 84, and then dividing both sides by 5. And so x is equal to 84 over 5. Let's do one more example of this idea. Let's say we want to solve x squared over 4 plus x over 8 is equal to 3. Looking at this, I can see there's a common fact, uh, common denominator of 8. So my, lowest, my common denominator is 8. It happens to be the lowest, but you don't really always need to use the lowest. I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 8. Distribute the 8 through. That gives me 8 over 1 times x squared over 4 plus 8 over 1 times x over 8 is equal to 24, 8 times 3. Then um, 4 divides me 8 two times. So we can divide both the number by 4 and you get 2x squared. 8 divides into 8 itself. So we're going to get 1x is equal to 24. Again, you now have an equation that has no um, no fractions in it. So now this is a quadratic equation. We get this equal to 0 with 2x squared plus x minus 24 equals 0. If it's factored, you can factor it. If it doesn't factor, you use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula would be minus the coefficient of x, the so minus b, plus or minus the square root of the b squared minus four times the thing in front of the, x, the coefficient of x squared, which is two, the a is two. Then the c is the constant on the end, minus 24. 
all over two times seven. And so now we just need to simplify this. This is minus one plus or minus the square root. Underneath turns out to be 193 over four. 193 has no perfect squares in it, so we can leave it in this radical form and then to answer. Every fraction, every equation that has fraction, it's solved in a similar way. First, two of those fractions, and then uh, solve the other.